Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Uh, welcome to Midwest Hunting Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Uh, Joel and I are here to, today for another episode, um, and what we're going to do is, is uh, first, as we always do, is talk about, hey, what have you done the last last week? So, Joel? Yeah, again, uh, getting cold, Tim, so doing a lot of winterizing at home. Uh, I actually have some outside faucets in a shed. Um, I live in rural, rural Iowa, and uh, I actually thought thought about it and uh, thought it might be a good idea to turn that water off going to that shed. So, um, previous episode I talked about winterizing the boat and mowing some lawn and things like that. But, uh, you know, that's that's what I've been up to and uh, besides that my main focus is uh, hunting. So we've been out, and my wife and I have been out uh, three or four times. In fact, when we're filming this episode, um, I was out this morning and saw a couple bucks, which is good. Um, it's but it was 25 degrees and uh, and pretty chilly. So, but y- you got to be out there. You can't shoot a can't shoot a deer from the kitchen. And uh, so, um, uh, that's where a lot of my time's being spent. Tim is out in a tree stand or in a hunting town. Did you get a chance? And I know you have a target buck. Uh, what do you call him? Uh, Notch. Notch is my uh, target buck, and I uh, have yet to see him in on hoof yet. But uh, I've got some uh, good good video pictures of him, good uh, photos of him, and I'm seeing him at different spots on my property, which is encouraging to me. And uh, some some at, in the daylight, some at night yet. So I'm, I'm hoping, and I'm hoping to have an opportunity at least to see him on the hoof to see um, what he might look like. Well, yeah, winter's coming. Yeah, winter's coming, as they say, right? How about you? What, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, so for me, um, I've also been, I've got four hunts in so far. May have burned out a stand. I had a shooter buck last night and uh, saw a lot of does. I think I saw something like six bucks and 17 does, something like that. A lot of deer. Um, but I was doing a lot of rattling. I think uh, they must have spotted me rattling from a movement perspective. He was out about 100 yards, turned around and looked right at me. So, hmm. well, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, let's see what else have I been doing. Uh, you know, when you're up in your stands, you think about a lot of things. So, I've been thinking about stand placement, food plots, where I'm going to put food plots, what those food plots are going to be. Um, Also, I uh, was out at the NRCS offices last week. Um, I had a cost share with regards to putting in the winter rye that I talked about last week. And then also um, talking about doing a couple other programs with Equip and maybe a Monarch program for another five acres that uh, I might put in. So, been really busy that way. Um, But it's exciting. I mean, that's, that's fun for me. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to, you know, just let's, let's do a little kudos for, uh, you know, Kevin and Jeremy, some previous episodes, right? Um, and they were talking about Equip and some of the some of the uh, cost share programs that were out there. And um, it's, it's starting to come, you know, it sounds like you're going to have some options maybe here to consider uh, moving into next year. Yep. Yep, I'm excited about that. I think it's important that our listeners, if this is fueling your own property, um, it pays to forge those relationships with the USDA side and the NRCS uh, side offices. Um, they can really be beneficial for you. Yeah, and there's, it just seems like there's more opportunities, I'll just leave it out there, more opportunities um, than, than you think there is. Absolutely. Always out, out there. So Joel, what, <clears throat> what are we talking about uh, this week? Yeah, so this episode is going to be about chainsaws steel chainsaws to be specific and um, also just kind of some general maintenance on uh, and some some part identifications and some things looking things to look at um, going into heavy chain at least for me and you it's a heavy chainsaw time of year coming up after hunting season 
Um, you know, you're setting out in the tree stand, you're looking at dead trees fall down or dead trees standing up that, man, I got to cut those down. Um, I have a cabin with a wood stove, so I burn a lot of wood uh, during the winter time. And then, uh, you know, for campfires and whatnot. So that's what the episode's going to be about is just real high level chainsaw maintenance going into um, cutting season. And I'll, I got to add, I mean, I've cut a lot of trees, but. And I'm sure there's been more people that have cut trees than you, Joel, but you have cut down a lot of trees. I've, I've cut my share. I don't, you know, I, can, I compare myself to my brother, who's like, like I think like a, at the top, right, as far as cutting <laughs> trees. My brother actually, uh, you know, had, had, had nothing but a uh, wood furnace in his house for the last decade or longer. And... Uh, so I'm certainly not to that status, nor will I ever be to that status, but uh, I do use my chainsaw a lot, and that's why I got a good one. Should be a good episode. Yeah. All right, let's Stay go. with us. So again, I've um, got steel chainsaw here. Um, you may have something else, but generally speaking, they're very similar. You've got your bar, and you've got your, uh, your uh, kickback uh, safety switch. You've got a chain, and then you've got, uh, mine is an 18-inch. Um, chainsaw and uh, that's the determination of uh, you know the distance from the tip uh, to the sprocket here uh, on how big a tree that you cut or in one swipe so what we're, we're going to do um, first of all is I'm going to loosen up these nuts and we're going to uh, those hold your bar in place and uh, I'm going to loosen them up just a little bit and then I'm going to take a little bit of tension off my chain so when I do take this off that uh, I can get it back on pretty easy. So loosen these two nuts up. My Most chainsaws that I know of come with this little tool. Um, you can use a flathead screwdriver and your chain tightener is right here and I like to, you know, counterclockwise uh, we'll loosen it. And you, you can see that your, um, your bar now and your chain are both really, really loose. And then I'll go in and uh, remove these nuts all the way. Okay, I've got these nuts removed now. And then we're going to take, we're going to take the cover off. And um, first of all, you can see there's a lot of gook in here. So I've got some, I've got some work to do to clean this up. And then when I take this, this chain off and bar, you're going to see um, even some more stuff in there, uh, but this is what uh, your chainsaw is going to look like. This is uh, your bar and your chain. This is the sprocket that it runs on with its its clutch driven, and um, you've got a tightener here. When I take this bar off, you'll be able to see that. But there's a little pin that goes in your bar, and um, that's what moves the bar in or out to tighten up your chain. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this off. And um, what I'm going to do is I want to inspect my little sprocket. I want to clean this up. And then I also want to flip the bar 180 degrees um, to allow for continuous wear and tear um, on the bar. If I keep it in the same orientation over a period of time, uh, the top of this bar will wear quicker than the bottom of it um, because of the, that's where the torque is being generated. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to remove the cover here to get to my spark plug. I'm pretty sure my spark plug here is in good shape. I just changed it out uh, not too far in the past. So again, if your chainsaw, I know some chainsaws, the spark plug's exposed, uh, but for the steel, there's a cover over top of it. So I'm right out in the process of removing the, the cover to get to the spark plug. Um, so a couple of things here. So I've taken off uh, my plate again. Again, your chainsaw, if it's not steel, maybe uh, the spark plug is exposed. Um, in most cases, there's some type of cover that you're going to have to take off. The really nice thing about these steels is you've got a, a screw here that holds the cover on, but the screw is 
is permanently attached so you could lose these if you're taking this off out in the woods or whatever these screws aren't going to fall out so that's just kind of a neat little thing but uh, now I've, I've got my uh, spark plug and my uh, air cleaner filter exposed and um, <laughs> Uh, as you can tell, this, uh, this air filter uh, is really dirty, so while we're in here, we're going to clean that out real quick um, and go from there. Alright, so um, we've got the cover off here. Uh, I've taken off the air filter. It's definitely dirty, as you saw earlier. Uh, to do that, it's just a quarter turn counterclockwise, and it just snaps on and off. Looks like this uh, filter is replaceable, so it's probably time for me to get a new one. But in the meantime, I just uh, sprayed it out with air. Um, looks really, really good and cleaned that out. So I'm going to set that off to the side. The other thing is, um, I know I've changed the spark plug on this, uh, but it's been a while. So I'm going to pull the spark plug wire. And there's a little rubber shroud that goes around the spark plug. And... Uh, we were struggling with trying to get that taken off and what actually happens is uh, you do not have to take that off. Your wrench will fit through that rubber shroud and you connect your wrench and just turn it counterclockwise and uh, your spark plug loosens and will uh, come up on spark plugs. So tighten your spark plug by fingers and then put your wrench on this and give it a quarter of a turn and it is tight. The other thing to look at is um, your sprockets. Your sprocket here is really where the power from the motor converts to the chain. So you will, these are meant to wear out over time. And uh, you can see I've got some grooves cut into mine, but um, all in all, pretty good shape. I have had to replace the sprocket already um, from wear and tear. And it's designed, like I said, it's designed to be a wear piece. The last thing we're going to do is uh, put our blade and put our bar back on. And I know uh, what hole, tightener hole, was used because it's empty. And the one that I need to put it on is uh, still full of gunk. So I'm going to rotate this, again, trying to uh, even out the wear over time on, on, on this uh, bar. And I'm going to put the bar on. And then I am going to put the chain on over top of it here. Alright, so I got my bar on. Um, I like to put the chain on the bar. It works best for me. And uh, put the bar on. And then put the chain over top of the sprocket. You may have to loosen it up a little bit more to get enough slack to go over your sprocket. And that's it. Now the... Uh, thing to do is give a little bit of tightening here while it's uh, before you put the cover on. Make sure you're in the grooves. And then I'm going to put my cover on. This is always an adventure trying to hold the blade in place and uh, put the cover on. So you want to tighten the nuts. Um, you want to tighten them a little bit, but you still want to leave it loose enough that you can go into your uh, chain tightener. And what you're looking for is, this is actually pretty good so far, so let me loosen it up. You, you're not looking for uh, this type of slack. You're going to tighten it up, and you want this to be pretty taut. That's pretty close. And we'll call that good. So that's our uh, maintenance, seasonal maintenance going into winter. We should be in great shape. All right, another discovery here is, um, I did not know this. The second dumbass here is uh, educating me, and then we went on YouTube and checked this out. But steel has a little uh, summer and a winter um, little adapter here to uh, allow more air or less air going into the carburetor and the engine cooler. So uh, that is located, it's a little orange tab here. You can take your tool and pull it out. And the easiest way to remember this is uh, for summer, it's uh, the non-hold area. 
and for winter you want the 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 hole um, in towards the engine. So I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to put the hole back in here, and it just it literally is a little orange piece of plastic that slides in to a groove on the top of the engine, and you can do it with your fingers and the and the screwdriver. So. We're set for the winter and in the summer I'll pull that back out and uh, flip it around again. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.